Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. The adventure started out heading down a busy highway in Orange County, past lots and lots of houses, beautiful and typical Southern California suburban landscape. And then we got to the top of a hill and made a right turn and entered a whole nother world. It was literally like going back in time. In fact, the further down the little road we traveled, the more removed we felt from the hustle and bustle of today's California. We were entering old California, an expression I'd end up using many times during the day. It doesn't get any prettier than this. I feel like we have stumbled upon a real Southern California treasure here. I have a feeling we have here to tell us a little bit about where we are because I'm not sure I know where we are. Pete, introduce yourself to everybody. I'm Pete DeSimone. I'm the manager of Audubon California Star Ranch Sanctuary here in Southeast Orange County. The Star Ranch Sanctuary. S T A W -R, R. Okay, is that the star? Are we on the Star Ranch? You're right, pretty much in the center of the original 10,000 acres, and Audubon has 4,000 since 1973. Okay, so was there a family named Star, and yep. they, that Eugene was that their ranch yep. house? Eugene and Naplin Star accumulated this ranch back in the 20s and 30s, and passed away in the 60s. Became a foundation, and a portion was given to Audubon back in 1973. Now, did they live? Live here when it was no, an active no. ranch. This was their vacation home. It was a it was a working ranch. I mean, he had some cattle on here, and there were cowboys. and And you'll see, there's an old ranch set up down the road. But no, he just came out here. You know, he lived in the, at the Jonathan Club in Los Angeles. Oh gosh, he and, was rich. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had a small oil company, and this is where he came to hang out, ride horses, hunt, whatever. And oh, wow, yeah. well, it's beautiful now. I don't know. If it could have been even more beautiful back then, because yeah. you can't see any development around here, and yet we're right in the exactly. middle of development. Yeah, we're we're in the heart of a major canyon, Bell Canyon, uh, in the south part of the county, and it's really wonderful because it's protected. It comes out of the National Cleveland National Forest through Star Ranch, through Casper's Park, empties into San Juan Creek and into the ocean, and it's pretty well isolated. Back. Oh, probably the 30s, 40s, uh, they created that, and there's an old remnant of an aqueduct, just a kind of a shallow trench that uh -huh. runs all the way down probably 300 yards to the small orange grove, and they put boards in there, backed up the water, it would flood the aqueduct and irrigate the orange trees. So they had a citrus Pretty, grove here. Yeah. This oh, was this, a working ranch. Yeah, working ranch. ranch. You know, pig pen, you know, cows, wow, uh, what small cows. Wow, what do you cows. use this for today? <laughs> Uh, this is where the field crew and the field crew leader who does uh, Sandy's restoration work on habitat I restoration. Maybe you lived here. No, we live in the old cookhouse <laughs> down the road. <laughs> All right, this is just the beginning. This yeah. is the kind of the civilized part yeah, of the ranch, the built up part of the ranch. Look at this right down here. What's the name of this creek down here? This is here? Bell Creek. Bell it Creek, goes yeah. goes all the way down. Boy, yeah. this is beautiful. Mm. We're going to leave here. Boy, look at all the oak trees. Yeah. And these are, mm. what's and this big one? Sycamores. Yep. Boy, this is beautiful. Doesn't take long to learn your trees here. There's only two or three of them. <laughs> Oak, sycamores. And the occasional alder. There's a, well, wait a minute. There's an evergreen tree. Well, my headquarters area has some exotics that they planted. <laughs> but as soon as you get on the ranch, it's pretty pretty much wild. That's what I want to do right now is get out on the ranch. The Star Ranch, which is owned and operated by the Audubon Society, I think we're all in for a real treat. And this is a total surprise, not only for me, but I think for most people who come here the first time. That, that could be. More words getting out that we're here, and we offer a lot of opportunities for kids and adults to come out. But, uh, you know, this is great publicity for us. Maybe more folks will be able to get out here if get this well, on the you want them to know. come, but you don't want too many of them to yeah, come. Yeah, and, and for their safety, too. It's, you know, we don't want to love it to death either. All so. right. We're going to love it a little bit right yeah. now. Before we got started, we found people. Give us a wave, people. There are people here at the Star Ranch. And here's your wife, Pete. Come on in. Your name is? Sandy DeSimone. Okay, now you're here with Pete all the time. Yes. And you wanted to introduce us to some people I here. did. We have the Assistant Director, Research and Education, and, uh, Scott Gibson. Our winter ornithologist, Lisa Burrell. 
our two riparian interns, Caitlin and Rachel. Riparian interns. Yeah, they work in <laughs> the creek. Yeah, that's great. And our five field crew are hard working up on a hill, so they're not here. Uh -huh. Then we have the Orange County Conservation Corps crew. Hands up. And their supervisor, Rodney, in the back. And they do all kinds of work here all year round, don't they? They do till June on a grant, yep. All right, and there's a lot to do on this ranch. Oh, yeah, they help with the flood damage and restoration and weed control. We don't use chemicals here, so it's hard work. They working you all hard today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's it. That's, there are a lot of people here just on a regular basis. Yeah. But I don't think we're going to be seeing a lot of people where we're going, are we? Probably not likely. All right, so we're leaving civilization. We're leaving you all behind. If you don't see us by sunset, <laughs> send somebody out looking for us, okay? Right. See you all later. Give us a wave. And Pete, you and I are going to Take a ride start down. off from the sanctuary office yep. and head down the road and see what this Star Ranch is all about. Were these cut out as what kind of roads? Wagon roads? Uh, we looked at aerials back in the 40s. Um, a lot of these roads weren't in. in they, around the whole ranch is about 18 miles of roads. And the only pavement is pretty much right up to the bridge. And now as we go out on the ranch, it's all roads they graded probably in the 40s and 50s. Um, and that we have to maintain too because uh, boy when the water comes up oh, you're really yeah. cut off aren't yeah, you it was it was pretty intense look down there camera to your mm -hmm. left wow that's great yeah that was really beautiful right now this is wild country isn't it it really this is old california this is um you don't see too many places like this anymore and then it kind of opens up. Yeah, there's Bell Canyon. Look over there to your right, out, Cameron, up on, on the ridge down. top over yeah. there. Is this all part of the ranch as yeah. far as we can see up there yep. on the top of the. Exactly. Now you're going to catch a few, a few houses that, that from the south end of Dove Canyon, but otherwise, everything you see is Star Ranch. Another creek. This just does this just keep switch back and yeah. back and forth. Same creek. Oh, look right here. down here to your right, Cameron. Oh wow. Boy, you got to have a four wheel drive to be up here, don't you? Creek crossings are not normally as bad as the roads because uh, the adobe clay out here and that gets a little bit moist. It's like driving on a frozen lake. Now we're going up, and you said maybe we're going up. Yeah, I'm so far so good. Uh, let me see how the road looks. This is pretty good, but uh, there's a couple of touchy areas. We're going to turn around and we're back down. Oh, boy, I'm glad you're, oh! <laughs> you got to keep moving, though. That's yeah. the secret. Yeah. A lot of this is a little loose from fixing it not too long ago. Boy, the these trees. are big old oak trees too. Oh, there's some really nice ones in the canyon. Wow. Oh my gosh. Look over here to the right. Oh my gosh, this is spectacular. What canyon is this over to our right? That's Bell. Runs north and south. All the way to the ocean? In, into um, San Juan Creek, and then that drains into the ocean along the Ortega Highway. What is so amazing is to realize that all of Southern California used to look like this back up in here. Yep. Here we go. Up the hill. Whoa. I feel like I'm in a covered wagon in old California. <laughs> this is old California. We have stopped. We're out of the car and look at this panoramic view and I think the clouds really add to it 
What are we looking at over here, Pete? What is this well, big San, mountain right over here? It's uh, Santiago Peak. It's Saddleback Mountains. Those are the Santa Ana Mountains. And uh, Saddleback is Majesca Peak, the other peak with the towers on it to the left, and Santiago Peaks. That's what we call and Saddleback. And this is where we came from down yep. in here. It's Bell Canyon. And yeah. then here are all these houses, which really points up how you are circled and completely surrounded. Well, not quite, not quite. We, we've got mostly the, the houses are on the western side. National Forest to the north, Casper's Park to the south. What and national that, park Cleveland, is Cleveland National Forest is most of the wow. area. San, San Diego Peak and out across to the north. Now, peak. is this the ranch we're, we're standing we're a, on we're right a here? Little, uh, west of center on the ranch right now. But this is the, the original ranch right here. Yeah. What would have happened out here? Why is this cleared off like this? Oh, they they, they did a lot of disking and dry farming for um, cattle feed, uh, not farming for agriculture, just for the cows. And so a lot of the areas that were flat like this, um, you can see historical photos of them just being tilled and and growing cattle food. And Boy, this is, now do people, when they visit the ranch, do they come up here oh, like this? A, try to get as many people up here as possible, yeah. And what do they do when they get up here? Have the same thing you did, wow, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's pretty nice. And just kind of take a, it all in. Yeah. It's, I'm just trying to figure out what Audubon is doing with all this. It's a combination of things between protecting what we have here and restoring some of the habitats. It's it's also a representative of what old California used to be like, and the coastal sage scrub habitat is not found too many other places in the world, and ours is found here in, in this part of the world, and we've got, we built on a lot of it, so there's something to be said for what's left and treatment. Just right. open space like yeah, this. Yeah. Now, are there animals out in here? There sure are. You don't get to see them all, but there's deer and coyotes and mountain lions and bobcats and gray fox. Those are the big ones. And then... Yeah pocket gophers and mice and and bulbs. birds because this is an yeah. audubon yeah it's let's a put in a plug right for the birds <laughs> it's a little quiet right now but uh if we hang around long enough we'll hear something or see something now truth and advertising we were going to go up and get that big panorama mm -hmm. from up on top of this knoll right here this is the top of the mountain yeah, right actually right over over the top of that is a little higher but the truth of the matter is there's no way in heck we're going to be able to get the car up there after these winter rains yeah i've been here 25 years and i think by now i know how far i can push the limits on road conditions and even if you have a four-wheel drive, doesn't mean you're going to get so there. So this really is rough country back oh, yeah. here yeah. all the time yeah yeah it's uh, actually the roads are in pretty good shape right now but we try to keep them open for, for our use, for researchers, for the fire department. Um, but the rain, it kind of rules the day. Rain, that Boy. gets wet. You but you know, wait. you wonder how in the world those early pioneers ever uh, made it, ever made it across all of this. I, I know exactly. There's a, if we could get there, there's what we call the Fox Ranch, about another two miles back. Mr. Fox grew apricots back there, back when there were no roads, and there's still a, a living producing apricot tree with no irrigation it's amazing and i always look at that and think how did this guy even with, if these roads were here how did he get that to market yeah. i mean and i don't think these roads were here so you know we've got it this is pretty cushy well, for us you they know were, they were a hardy bunch back <laughs> oh, then yeah, weren't they? yeah a lot of horses and mules and wagons and stuff but wow i mean it's tough enough to walk it let alone I, you know move uh produce and I think we got here. a good day today didn't yeah. we? oh man you nailed it it's beautiful out and you know what all these homes over here at first you think of them as a negative thing and then you realize that because those homes are there you appreciate this even more yeah I think you could say that yeah and it's it, it is what it is it was nothing out there in 1985 when we came nothing. out here it was a little pump station out on the Plano Chibuco and a little bit of Cota de Casa was built, but no, this is um, all over the last 20, 25 well, years. Well, a lot of growth over here. Not much growth yeah, here, no, not ever gonna be any no, growth here. The Cleveland National Forest and us in Casper's Park represents uh, 160,000 acres or so. It's gonna remain just yeah. like it is. Yeah. We've come to a sudden stop because Scott is blocking the road which means he has something to show us. Now, first off, your name again is Scott, uh, Scott Gibson. Okay, and you're kind of work with education with 
uh, adults and children. And kids, yeah. We do a lot of education programs for all ages here. Okay. And, and now, our... what are you showing us here? Well, what I'm doing here, we actually have, uh, this is called a scent station. And this a what? Is a scent station. And scent. Yeah. And I'll tell you why we call it a scent station here in a minute. And this is actually a technique that we use um, to monitor large mammal activity in places where it's nice and dry, like it is here in Southern California. What is this white? The white stuff is gypsum powder, so it's you can buy it, put it in your garden, loosens yeah. up garden soil, and it's not toxic, so we actually use it because it's a really good tracking medium, so it records the tracks really well. Those are animal tracks, look! Those are actual animal what tracks. What are these down here? So we have, uh, this is coyote tracks. We have a coyote going across, and you can see he actually shoved the rock around there. So he shoved that rock? He did, and the reason that he shoved the rock, and the reason we call them scent stations, is because I actually put a scent lure on the rock ah. that attracts the large mammals to the rock and now, so there's some others there is some other ones there and you can see if you look right look over at, here Cameron this is great at the relative size of the two tracks you can see this is a much bigger track than that one and that's actually that? that's our smaller dog that's the gray fox so we have two species of dog here coyotes and gray foxes so this just points out to what the kids when they see something like this yeah absolutely it we, proves their animals around it, it here. does and our the way that we do education programs we're biologists by trade so we want to show people what it's like to be a wildlife biologist so we actually go out here and and show them the real research techniques that we would use to study large mammals wow, i bet the kids love this and i bet they're I, ooh and an eye and they are, and I, it's not just kids. I think even the adults come out here and, and ooh and I over this as well. Now, so, do you ever see even bigger tracks we in do. the gypsum? We do. Like cougar um, we tracks. Do. We get mountain lion tracks fairly often. Uh, we don't have any, unfortunately, on the on the road today no, to show you. No, you don't but... have any, fortunately, to show us. <laughs> uh, I don't want to see mountain a, lion tracks. Well, it's, it's an interesting... It's, uh, well, this is their home. It is their home here. And, and it was their home. Look, there would there be mountain lions all out in here? Oh, uh, well, they're very territorial oh. Animals. Out in here, look so, at this. This is wild country out here. Is. Look over here, Cameron. This is all wild country out and here. And we are in Bell Canyon, which is known to be a main uh, north-south corridor here for mountain lions. So we know they move through here, and we get a lot of tracks and scat. Well, wait a minute. Look. Look at this, Cameron. There's You've got gypsum all up and down the road here. We do. We do. When we do the program, we usually try and put out at least six or seven scent stations to try and get a good wide variety of tracks. So there's no way an animal can cross the road <laughs> and not get... And, and a lot of these guys have pretty good uh, sense of smell. So they're smelling this stuff from a long way away and actually coming to smell the rock. Wow. So, yeah. Well, let's take one more look at this. Look at this rock. This is fascinating. Uh, coyote actually pushed this probably with his nose. He did, and we actually have a scent station uh, on another trail with a camera on there, and we've gotten a lot of good video footage of uh, gray foxes and, and coyotes pushing the rock around as well. So they actually will kind of rub their neck and their, their body. We've even seen them roll around in it before. So just in the like, gypsum. Oh, yeah. just Well, they're, they're rolling around on the scent on the rock, just like your dog at home would do that if it found something dead in the yard. We have left the gypsum, and Scott has brought us to the, what is this creek again? This is Bell Creek. Bell Creek, and yeah. there's a reason why we're standing here. There is a reason. Uh, not only do we do stuff with animal tracks, we do a lot of education programs. Um, we actually, this is an area we do research in. We actually do research on the aquatic invertebrates, the bugs that live in the creek. With the and, kids. Well. And the adults. And, and for research as well, and then we turn that into an education program. So adults and kids will actually come out here, and we'll take them out, and we will show them how we do research on aquatic invertebrates and we can actually use aquatic invertebrates and the bugs that are here to tell us about how clean the creek is and so they actually go out here they'll catch their bugs identify them and rank them by how much pollution they can tolerate and what we have here wow yeah and what other kind of things happen out here? We do a lot of other stuff, actually. We do uh, a lot of programs at night where we take people out and call for owls and coyotes. You go out here at night? We do. We actually we have a flatbed GMC truck with benches in the back, and we'll There's drive no down. There's no light there. back there. There's no light, and that's part of the attraction. Yeah. Uh, for Orange County to get out here and not see any light, you get to see the stars. Nice full moon if you have a full moon, so that's great. See, this is, as Pete was telling us, this is old California. This is old California at its finest. Yeah, and this you is. Think about it look over here Cameron this is the way the pioneers would have found it when they were coming through here 150 200 years ago absolutely and we have a very nice position here in Bell Canyon where we're protected by the Cleveland National Forest and oh yeah um, this is a nice and area how do the kids and the adults react to what we've oh, seen it's, today it's amazing when they come down here I think a lot of people feel like they're traveling back in time just yeah. even coming down our access road and then you know, not very many people in Southern California get to go play in a pristine creek. So to come out here and do this type of stuff, it's a real experience.
experience for a lot of people. Well, I'd like to play in the creek. Look over here, Cameron. Look at the waterfall coming down. But I got to tell you, the water is a little cold. It's a little cold we'll this time just, of year. We'll just look at the creek right now. Yeah, we. An we... old California <laughs> creek with cold water running in it. Last stop, we're coming from out behind the historic citrus tree that's been here on the Star Ranch for how long do you think these have been here? Oh, 40, 50 years. Yeah, a long time. Yeah. But we're looking not at citrus, we're looking at the stars of the show right here. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> what are we looking at, Pete? Well, we've got some barn owls that have been nesting in a cavity up in that uh, eucalyptus tree. Big limb pulled out years ago and created a gigantic cavity in barn owls which are found throughout the canyon, throughout the county, are fairly common. I've decided to use it, and a few years ago I put a camera up on there, and uh, it's been great. It's on the internet, people can watch it and get so a lot wait, of it. So that's a camera up there pointing right. down into the... Into the cavity, and then there's another one that I can move and pan and tilt. what do you in. see when you look at it? Is this right. on the internet? Yeah, it's on the internet right now, and w right now there's seven chicks, and both adults are in there. And at so night, you see the whole... You see the whole thing. I mean, everybody's not positioned that you can see them all the time. But <laughs> and come evening, you know, it gets dark. The male takes off, goes hunting. The female's in there. He's starting to bring the food back. He catches a mouse, a small rabbit. She wow. brings it in, tears it up, and feeds... The oldest chick is now two weeks old. Is and this a big hit on the Internet? It's... Yeah, I think so. And, and what's really nice about it, a lot of the people who comment on the site are interested in these birds. They're interested in wildlife. And there's a really wonderful interaction among all these folks who just care about this stuff and want to learn about it and just enjoy watching them. It's streaming oh. live right now, 24-7. Right. Yep. Yep. So what, what what happens when the chicks grow up and fly away? It's, well, you're just looking at a hole in a tree. What normally happens is when they're at about eight weeks, seven or a half, eight weeks of age, they can fly and they start taking off and the parents will still feed them. They'll be looking for the parents to catch some food and they'll chase them around and get it. And then they may roost. The chicks may roost in there and then all of a sudden they're dispersing. And then historically, the adults come back and they start roosting in it. And as in last year, they had a second clutch of eggs, and they so, had, so they could keep going. So there's always something going Usually on. Usually, somebody's there. It may be just sitting in there, but it's it's not too often that it's empty. <laughs> wow, you know, it's a great spot for them. So you know that is wonderful because that connects people with the Star Ranch itself yeah, and with so. wildlife. Yeah, yeah. Let's stand over here because this is so pretty right here. You know what? This is look at this. This has just been such a surprise. I think it is to most people. Yeah. We're gonna put the web on the screen right now so that people can call you and your wife and 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 set up uh, sure. programs where they come out and do all of these things yeah. track animals and There's look in the streams kinds and all kinds of all kinds of night tours a little bit of everything yeah. <laughs> we're full service sanctuary audubon is to be congratulated for having the wisdom to acquire this property years ago yeah it's good to hear saved it so. from development Yep. Saved it for the future generations of Californians to see what old California was all about. There you go. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Thanks. What you was it you were telling us riding down in the car about when people come here and and appreciate it and understand it? Well, I, I think an important part of it is whether you like to hike or bird watch or anything, that this open space and, and preservation areas like this just contributes to quality of life for everybody, whether you live in the city or in the country or whatever, it's really important. Yeah. And it's kind of special. There's not much left of it in the world. This is Southern California habitat is very unique. It's very special. We got it right here in Southern California for all of us to visit and enjoy. We have had an absolutely wonderful springtime afternoon here at the Star Ranch. Beautiful, peaceful nice way to get away from the city i mean as you're driving up you see all the homes and the houses and you think there's no way this could be here and you drive over that first little creek and here you are in yeah. this beautiful preserve it's beautiful well, you know what they say come on around here kids let's get everybody in and turn around and look at the camera this is old california yeah that's what this is the way we're all hearing. of this area used to right? look that's what i was trying to tell my kids as well as we're driving here this is what it used to look like
Well, hello everybody, I'm Hewell Hauser, and what a wonderful day we had on Star Ranch in Orange County. Trust me, the Star Ranch is well worth a visit. And of course, the owl cam, well, you got to go on the web and check out the owls and see what they're up to. And if you'd like to go on this particular adventure again, or share it with family or friends, of course, it's available on DVD. All you have to do is call 1-800-266-5727, and we'll be glad to send it to you right away. Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.